So today we are checking out a new knife from Red Horse Knife Works. Now, Red Horse Knife Works is actually in my area and I keep meaning to make it to his shop. One of these days, we're definitely gonna do a shop tour, but I do have a discount code for his site. So if you wanna get anything from his site, check out the links down in the description. You have 10% off of anything on his site. Now, as far as the knives he has, so he does custom work in Chicago, in his shop, and then he also has some overseas production knives, which is exactly what this is. So let's take a close look at the new Red Horse Warpig. Now, I do consider this somewhat of a tactical-ish knife, and one reason why is because of this blade. To me, this is a dowel blade shape, a dual ground dowel blade shape. It does have a slight recurve. It's an S35 VN blade steel. Um, so most companies do a pretty good job heat treating S35. Now, and, and I have done quite a bit of testing on it since I've had it and I have not had it long. I literally just got this thing, but I started uh, testing it out right when I got it. Uh, so it does have a dual grind, as you can see. This is a flat and this is a flat. Now this actually gets down relatively thin or actually very thin. It's like 165 thousandths blade stock. So it's very thick, very robust blade stock, but it gets down to about 13 thousandths in this area and then 20, 21 thousandths in this area. Now that's with their edge angle. If I sharpen it myself, it'd probably be like 15 thousandths here and then like 22, 23 thousandths up here, um, depending on what angle I put on it. The handle, titanium bolster lock with carbon fiber scales. Um, I, I love bolster lock, so you know I'm cool with that. The titanium mill pocket clip works great in and out of the pocket. Um, it does have T8 hardware all the way around, which I always appreciate. Full titanium, well not full, but a titanium backspacer. And then it does have a little bit of weight relieving on this side, on the inside, and uh, I think that's it, yeah. Let's talk about this action, then we'll talk about its cutting performance and everything, because like I said, I have been testing it and using it. So the flipper tap, it feels a bit low, but it has a very stout detent. So it makes for a very satisfying flicking action, or sorry, flipping action. It, um, it's a nice, comfortable flipper. It definitely has a lot of traction on it. You can do the light switch. And forgive my hands, guys. I, I was messing with ballistics gels. This stuff doesn't come off very easily. So, um, but the action though, yeah, you can light switch it, you can push button it, and which is cool. So you can kind of flip it however you want. But like I said, it does feel a little low. You don't want to get it from up there. You can get it from back here and flip it, but it feels a little awkward. You kind of want to get it right out here at the end and that's where it really, really hammers out and it feels nice and comfortable. Um, then you have the hole deployment. Now the hole deployment, like I said, this thing has a strong detent. Listen to this detent. Very strong detent. You can definitely hear it on the close as it pulls that blade back in. It's pretty satisfying in my opinion. So the whole deployment, because it has a strong detent, you know, you gotta have a good reverse flick for the reverse flick. Now I found that angling it and shooting your fingers this way makes it a little bit easier than going straight out. You really don't want to even go straight out. You want to go more up. And same thing with thumb flick. And then it works just fine. So, you know, it does take, you know, um, it, it's easy to do, but I'm just gonna say that, you know, it, it, it because of the detent strong, you know, you just gotta get a little used to it. But once you do, I mean, I mean, obviously I'm sitting here doing it repeatedly over and over. It's easy, it's good. Uh, but you know, it just, it feels like the hole's a little high. I guess that that's what I'm trying to say. The hole feels a little bit high. So, you know, and with a strong detent and the hole being up high, it feels like, you know, it should have been just a little bit lower. Uh, but I mean, it works good. So I'm, I'm not complaining about it. And, and it, you know, it's a good deployment option. Now, as far as 
cutting and ergonomics and everything. So I was surprised how good of a cutter this thing is. I would not have expected this thing to be as good of a slicer as it is, but because of this thin section right here, it traps the materials and it does have that slight recurve, which definitely helps. So passing through materials, man, it goes through like butter. Now the ergos are another thing that helps encourage that because it's slightly contoured, you know, and, and you know, it's a girthy handle. It makes it to where you can lock in with this grip. Like you, it's a very comfortable squeeze. So it makes it to where you can apply a lot of pressure without it fatiguing your hand or being a problem. I did notice I, I was doing the trigger pull quite a bit when I was doing repeated cuts, but, uh, but yeah, sliced way better than you, you would think, uh, being, a, you know, this thick of a blade stock. The front end, the, the, the tip of the knife, because it has this poon action right here, you can kind of push leverage down into the tip. So it works good for utility cuts too. Another thing I was actually pretty surprised with, you know, you just, you know, being somewhat of a tacticalish knife with the super thick geometry in many cases, not all. I mean, obviously there's gonna be some, some cases where, you know, it just works out like this one. But in some cases, you know, they're, they're not the most EDC friendly. Um, they're more for tactical stuff. Anyways, um, which I did stab this thing into some stuff because I wanted to check it out. You know, I wanted to see how it did stab and I was, you know, pleasantly surprised that it passed through this stuff right here. So I recently got this stuff. You guys might have noticed my backdrop has changed. Um, I have to constantly replace my backdrop because I constantly scratch and poke it, you know, showing you guys utility cuts and things like that. So I needed something that was kind of poke and slash proof, something that, that was a little bit more durable and self healing. So this is for like, like a, um, a workspace. And eventually I'll probably have to switch it out. I'm sure I'll poke it up and scratch it up, but I had some extra pieces from it. So I was stabbing this to this. I was stabbing the knife through it. And I was not expecting it to go all the way through. You know, it, it's just, it's such a thick, durable material. It's kind of like a hard plastic is what it's like but it actually did. So I have no doubt this thing wouldn't be very good for thrusting and with this big flipper tab, which does, you know, stand out quite a bit, right? It is a big flipper tab. Now that flipper tab pre prevents you from sliding up the blade. So there probably is some benefits to it. As you can see, this thing is a fall shot action, complete guillotine. <laughs> it's a very heavy blade. I did spine whack it to make sure the lock wasn't gonna slip. And it did not slip, it worked just fine. Um, afterwards, it locked up really good, no play in any direction. So I was happy to see that the lock was not slipping. Um, now, I will say with bolster locks, and something I do appreciate about bolster locks is that when your hands are wrapped around it, you prevent the lock from slipping. So if you wanted to dig this into something or poke it into or something, you know, to where you're putting stress on the lock, you're gonna prevent it from slipping if your hands are around it. Now, if you choke back here, no, it can definitely slip at that point. So, you know, you wanna make sure your hands are wrapped around the lock so you're actually making it stronger. Um, plus, you know, it did not slip. So, you know, that, that, that definitely adds to the, the security feeling of it not failing, right? Um, but that, that is one thing that's really cool about bolster locks is the fact that you make it stronger as long as you're holding it. Um, now, as far as negatives go, let's talk about some negatives. So one thing is, you know, so let me just say, there's not really much negative as far as negatives. I have like preferences. So nitpick preferences. So one thing, the flipper tab feels way big. It feels way too big for the knife. Now it works really well. So I hate to even say that because I've always said that I don't care how big a flipper tab is as long as it works well. And this works great. So... You know, is it that big of a deal? No, but it still is a bit big in my opinion. Now, the whole deployment, like I said, it feels like it's up a little bit high. Um, now, that could just be me though, but you know, it's fine, it works great, but you know, it just feels a little high. Um, the next thing is the sharpening tool and plunge grind. The plunge grind's good. I don't mind the plunge grind. They left you a couple good sharpenings in there. Um, it's close. You know, if it was any closer, if the end of the plunge grind was any closer to the edge, I'd bitch, but it's okay, right? It's okay. Not great, but okay. However, the flipper tab is very close to the edge. So it's a little difficult to sharpen 
Um, you just want to be careful. It's not difficult. You just want to be careful when sharpening so you don't hit the flipper tab. Now, I think he could have scooped it out right here. So you could put your finger over the top right there, like kind of like a finger groove right there. Not saying a, a, a finger choil here, but a finger groove right here on the flipper tab. Now you can still do it with the flipper tab and that's, I actually used it quite a bit like that, but it'd be even more comfortable if it had that groove and you absolutely could do it because, you know, even in the closed position, that, that spot does not get in the way. So um, I feel like it, it could have had that, you know, which would, in return, make it a little bit easier to sharpen and, you know, a little bit more comfortable in the hand with the choke up grip. Um, really though, man, anything I bitch about, man, is like literally just preferences. This thing is very, very well done. I will say it's either your style or it's not. That's the thing. You either love it or you hate it. And that's the way these knives are. So personally for me, I don't love it or hate it. I, I like it. So I like it. Um, it's just, it's not a hundred percent my style of a knife. Um, I like tactical knives. It's just, you know, I don't know. Some, something uh, just doesn't speak to me like other knives as far as the design. Now, if like, listen, if, if it does to you, do not let my opinion on style affect yours because it is built extremely well and would be a very versatile tool for you in your arsenal. Um, this is definitely something I could see even myself grabbing in certain situations and carrying it very comfortably and being happy with what I have in my pockets. So shout out to Red Horse. Definitely go and check out everything he's doing. He does make customs um, in his own shop in Chicago. So if you do want to check out some of those, you can check out his site. And then he has some production knives like this that are done overseas. So uh, being S35VN, usually S35VN usually doesn't have a problem with heat treatment. So usually, you know, I'm not saying it's impossible, but because I have had some bad S35, but usually it's pretty decent. So work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.